Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. Dude, I'm panicking. I can't do this. The channel, it's dying because of me. Cut that shit oh, oh. I need nasty Nick. Nasty Nick. Okay. Bad boys. Oh, bad, bad boys. boys. Oh. This is bad boys, ride or die. Anybody else get that 80s, 90s tingle when they saw the name Simpson and Bruckheimer flash across the screen in the opening credits? I mean, we know what these movies are. Bad Boys has become synonymous with fun, hilarious, dumb action movies. So thematically here, I'm just not sure that there's too much to say, except that each of these two leads gets their own kind of unique psychic journey in this movie. For Lawrence, it's this weird near-death dream that happens in the opening and becomes a recurring bit. It's like, I can't die now, Mike, so I'm just gonna go all out in ridiculous ways. Meanwhile, Smith's character has developed anxiety since Joey Pant's demise, and he's working through all of that. Hmm, could this be art imitating life? Anyway, it means the strong, confident alpha and the goofy, moronic sidekick are flipped on their head a little bit in this one. But the thing is, it's never enough to be significant at all in terms of story arcs or narrative heft. This is because directors Adil and Bilal get what Michael Bay had built into the DNA of this franchise from its inception. Simply Simply this, the action in every scene goes for broke. It's exciting shoot 'em ups and daffy humor mixed in with memorable cameos and side characters. But the really cool thing about these two most recent installments is that these directors are doing their own thing. They're not just copying Bay's blueprint verbatim. Each action sequence is completely unique visually. At points you've got flying drone shots, first person view cameras. Then there's the big camera rig gun, which flips between a gun's eye view and a close up of the actor's face. This stuff is heavily indebted to video games. So if you wanted to play Call of Duty with Smith and Lawrence for a few, look no further. Then the shots will move away from this into highly stylized whirling dervishes and other sequences. It's just top level craft. I mentioned the cameos. John Sally is back from the original Bad Boys of Detroit, Michael Bay himself pops up, and who could forget, of course, the most important of all, Reggie. Guys, the Reggie action scene in Lawrence House, this is the best thing I've seen since the Dragon Breaths gun in Wick 4. And this one is total hand-to-hand -hand meleeing. Yeah, they attempt to give the characters different motivations and inner struggles, but ride or die just never stops moving. Finally, I've got to say it, what has made the bad boys flicks rise to the top of the buddy cop comedies has always been the chemistry between Smith and Lawrence. Almost 25 years running, and they still find their groove in different spots of ride or die. But I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. Martin Lawrence is on fire in this film. I guess it turns out staring death right in the face lets you go for broke in the most convincing of ways. Well, I said that this movie never really slows down much at all. I actually think this is a good thing because when it does, uh, it's not the greatest. It wants to set up this classic who's the mole storytelling, but it really doesn't work because we know exactly who it is pretty much as soon as that character walks on screen. The first 15 minutes of the plot are kind of naughty. We're trying to figure out how the big bad is connected to the cartel and why the chief is being framed in the first place. There are also side characters that get a little too much unnecessary backstory. The truth is, the film is supposed to be fun and light on its feet, but whenever there are breaks in the action, it just gets a little sour. All of the characters are simultaneously flat, yet carrying this heavy trauma. If we lean into that, I think it gets tonally jarring whenever it rubs up against the comedy. For me, this just kind of works best if you just go, okay, bad guys, cover up. Clear the chief's name? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Sick fight scene. Honestly, I would just say that all of this could really be summed up as kind of what happens when you try to make a movie during a writer strike. Adil and Bilal clearly have something, but they need better script doctors to really make the dialogue pop. Lastly, look, I referenced it at the top. I just don't know how I really feel about reverse engineering Will Smith getting slapped in this movie. Not really because it's in bad taste, but it just doesn't make a ton of sense with regard to the character. Using panic attacks as the means for Mike to slowly lose his edge? Really? 
The I'm Mike Lowry from the original has lost his fastball? I don't know. I'm just not sure I'm really buying what they're selling. Seems to me more like a way for Will to humbly pay his penance for that Oscar moment a few years ago as he comes back into our lives. So what do we conclude? Bad Boys Ride or Die brings the 90s Simpson and Bruckheimer nostalgia with its blend of thrilling action and raucous humor. Directors Adil and Bilal add their own unique flair through top-level craft in drone and first-person cameras. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence still shine with their undeniable chemistry, and Lawrence in particular delivers one of his more hilarious performances. While the plot might get a little confusing and delve into trauma which is jarring against the light-hearted comedy, the hyperkinetic photography and magnetic charm of the leads make it an entertaining ride not die at the box office well there you have it the only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture fof gives bad boys ride or die 3.2 out of five stars if you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to head on over to FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.